Alice Mills. I work globally as a speaker, retreat facilitator, medium and mentor. My mission is to awaken and realign you back to your magnificence, your power and infinite potential. As the founder of the Rise With Love philosophy, I'm honored to share wisdom that will create the expansion of joy, abundance, love and freedom to flow into your life. If you're ready, I want to hear you say yes, because the most wonderful things will unfold for you when you embark on the journey to Rise With Love. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode to assist you on your soulful journey. As you fully embody the Rise With Love way of life, I truly believe the universe brings people on your path and it's up to you to take up those opportunities and see where they lead. I'm really excited to introduce you to my special guest today, who I felt from the moment we met has a powerful message to share. Her mission is to help others ignite their inner light and align themselves with their desires. You can see why this is one conversation I can't wait to dive into. So it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to life coach, Catherine Elizabeth. Welcome, honey. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. Now, where are you actually based? Because we're in different time zones. Yes, uh, I'm in England, Nottinghamshire, so Robin Hood land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we can think of Russell Crowe, who plays Robin yeah. Hood, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Catherine, you have an incredible journey, and there's been some major events that have happened in your life that have kind of propelled you to where you are right now. And so I would really love for you to start us off with, with the event that you say broke you down to help you be the person that you are today? Okay, so basically at 18, I was a bit of a wild child. I was just your average 18 year old that went out and had a good time. And basically me and my friends was like, let's move out and get a house, you know? Let's be crazy and do these things. And I was currently trained to be a nurse at the time. That's what I thought I wanted to do. I didn't leave school with any qualifications really. It was just, I wanted to help people, I'll be a nurse. Anyway, long story short, I fell pregnant with my partner I'm still with, we're childhood lovers. I met him when I was 15. Wow. um, Yeah. (laughs) And we've been on this journey together. So I was pregnant. I was like, "Mm, this, this is scary. I was in this house with my friends and long story short, they kind of all went home. It was a bad idea to move out. You know, We, we was crazy. And I couldn't go back home. My mom and dad are wonderful, but it's very much once you're on your own two feet, you're on your own two feet. And now you're pregnant, that's that. And basically I was so preserved, I was homeless for, for some time. And eventually I lived in a hostel, which was my idea of how then, you know, you, if you pitch this, I was in a room and that room is what I woke up in. That's what I showered in. There was maggots in the shower. I had oh my nothing. Goodness. <gasps> a bag of clothes, maybe heavily pregnant at this point. In fact, I was so embarrassed that when I used to get a taxi out of there, I used to pretend I worked there. I was embarrassed of being there. This place had criminals, vulnerable people who needed help. But I didn't think I was like them. I just needed a home. You know, I got a house eventually in a not so nice neighborhood, but it felt like a kingdom to me. And I had my baby and you would think, yay, you know, everything's good. A partner was with me in this house, but I actually turned to food. So how people perhaps turn to drugs or alcohol during a hard time of dark events, I turned to food. And I must have gained about 12 stone. Didn't really leave the house for about three years. Um, If I did leave the house, it was, you know, just just to literally leave the house quickly to the shop. Food gave me some kind of comfort for a short period of time, but also like a self-harm, you know. It was a weird relationship and it spiralled out of control. I ended up having my second baby and... Oh, it's hard because I wore a mask. I had my two beautiful children and this is supposed to be a happy time. But it was definitely a mask. Inside, I was far from happy. It was just nothing. Just this wanting out of where I was. And I remember sitting on the stairs contemplating how I could end my life. It could be hanging myself. Just dark thoughts. Not that I do them, but I had the thoughts. And this had to end. It was my son's first birthday. 
and I woke up and I knew I either changed my life or ended my life. And now looking back, I think what I mean by that is I didn't want to die. I wanted that part of me to end, that area of time in my life, this eating constantly, this miserable, not leaving the house. Who would I become? I'd lost myself. I was barely recognisable in every single way. I'd lost my glow, my light, everything, and I wanted it to end. So I obviously chose the option to give it a shot. You know, let's just change my life. And it did actually start with changing my diet. That was the first thing I did. I remember running up the stairs. I thought I was going to have a cardiac arrest. I was roughly about 22 stone and I got two kids. How am I, how am I meant to, to do this? You know, be a fit and healthy mom when I can't even get up the stairs. So I, I started to change my diet and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't follow a routine or anything. I just guess I pretended calories were money and if I had a thousand pounds to spend, what was I going to spend it on? And I soon realized that vegetables and fruit gave me more for my money. <laughs> and this kind of like, this was the start. And I ended up losing 10 stone. But as I did this, it learned me key ingredients to life. So I learned discipline. I learned self-love. I learned consistency. But I didn't get happiness. So even at the end of it, I'd lost my weight and I'm still not happy. You know, if anything, I was stuck in another pit. Nobody told you what to do once you've lost the weight. So all of a sudden I forgot how to eat. I ended up going into a bulimic stage. So many a time I saw my reflection in the toilet after a binge to go purge. And it, I felt lost again. How am I here? I thought this was all the answers. And and then I shared a transformation photo and realized I can help people. So many people out there was miserable with the way they looked. And I thought, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. I left school with no qualifications. And this is what I can do. So I went and trained as a personal trainer, which then led me to having my own, I had like a vegan snack company. And I kind of felt happy, you know, money, money started coming in and life was kind of, kind of good, you know, not great, but good. And I found a sense of purpose. I felt like I belonged. And then my partner was made redundant. And I was like, no, 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 not again. He doesn't have a job now. And I just have this small startup company. H how do we make this work? And for about a year, we struggled. I remember at one of the weekends, I was like, I have five pounds. I have two children and a partner. How, how do we work this? The universe always looked after me. Something would always happen. An order would come in or, you know, you just get lucky. And then life really started to bloom and, and I just, my business was flying, you know, I was making the next year, I doubled my turnover. I was like, this is it. I'm doing it. And my partner, it was two years ago in November, he got a new job because, you know, he had his own dark times after redundancy. And so November was great. He has this job. At the end of the month, we're going to get paid. So in November, I write my goals for the next year and look how far I've come. And this is where, be careful what you ask the universe because she might deliver it. So you really need to be <laughs> clarify exactly what you want. And I wrote, I want to be a more hands-on mum and abundant income. That month, I gave all of my profits to a homeless man in town. Homeless people, I just feel drawn to them. I know there's a way out. I just want to help people. And I think it's because I've been stuck. I've had nothing. And yeah, we all have it probably kind of goes back to when you were living in the hostel, right? everyone thinks you're bad but I just was in a bad place I'm not a bad human anyway so this is like the second half of my story during this time I'd written these goals my little boy wasn't very well and as a mother's instinct you must know you just kind of know when something's not right and um because I I'm quite an anxious creature many people around me was like you're just being anxious he's fine and each day I'd walk into school holding his hand and he was shrinking in my hand my instinct was telling me he's going to die. Something really bad is happening. And so it's two days before Christmas. It's payday for my partner, right? So the abundance of income is about to arrive. And I said to my partner, we've got to get him to the doctors. Um, through my own extensive research, I believed he either had cancer or type 1 diabetes. I felt like a mad woman. I was, this was it. There was something really wrong. We went to the uh, doctors and she was doing the tests on him. And he was on my knees like a skeleton and he looked like he was dying. And she was like, oh, I think mommy's being anxious. And she was wonderful. And she did this little finger prick test and that went off. And she did all these checks and she was like, oh, he seems fine. She went back to the finger prick and the number of this reading just said hi. And she looked at me and she said, I'm about to ring an alarm and a lot of people are about to come in here. 
don't panic. She rang this alarm and obviously I'm panicking. I thought like a Oh my gosh, it's like the first default, right? (laughs) There was no calm, right? I didn't meditate then either, you know. I was totally out of it. And then this doctor came in and he's on the phone to the hospital and he's like, I've got a little boy coming and he's coming now. So I still don't know what's wrong. He grabs my hand and shakes it and he says, Mom, you've just saved your boy's life. He's a type 1 diabetic. I have no idea what this means. In my head, I think I gave him too much sugar. I've done something stupid. We get to hospital and we was literally within hours of him going into a coma. He was totally not with it. He was helping him to all these machines. And this is two days before Christmas, you know. Life's supposed to be wonderful. You know, Santa's coming. And I've got another little boy and he's with my mom. And it was just horrendous. And my world fell apart again. That dark time that I had before, I was back. I was back right there. I was on this hospital floor. I felt like my soul just crushed. Um, I, I, you know, they explained to me type one diabetes. My son had the flu and instead of fighting it, his body killed his pancreas. I now need to inject him. I need to do everything. I couldn't, I couldn't process this, inject my child. Like, you know, it's hard to get your head around. We had no help. Family is wonderful, but, you know, it was just me and my partner, my son and my other son. And um, we spent some time in the hospital getting to grips. And because it was Christmas time, they actually did send us home to go and deal with this. So my son was actually anorexic at diagnosis because Taiwan diabetes eats your body fat when you're not having insulin. So I'm coming home. My son is screaming for food, but I've been told I can only inject him three times a day. He's at the dinner table licking the Christmas cake begging for food I went upstairs and fell on the floor and just before I came home I had this conversation with the doctor I said I don't want my child to die and he said I can't tell you he won't because I suppose if you see that as a bigger that's life isn't it we we all come here we all go he goes but we can get through this I can't tell you what's going to happen so when I did get home I was talking to my partner we made a pact if my son died I was going with him to wherever we go next my partner was going to stay with my other boy. At the time, that made complete sense to me. That was the rational decision. Looking back, I was acting from pain. I was acting from where I was in that moment. Suicide is never the answer. Yeah, but for me, it made great, great sense. My son's going, I'm going. And um, I remember two days after, I was on a conversation with my older sister on the phone. I was crying and she said, I feel like part of you has died. And it really triggered me. Like, I'm still the same person. What do you mean a part of me has died? But a part of me did die. That was the biggest awakening of my, that was the start. So my weight loss journey learned me how to get the things I want in life. It gave me like core values, but this broke me to a new level. Almost losing a child. It's my whole life changed. I had to quit my business. So you know how I said my goals were to be more hands-on mom and have income? That day my partner was paid. I would have lit fire to all that money to get my son's health back. Money didn't matter. If your health is not great, money does not help that situation. Money is not always the answer. And yes, I was about to become a hands-on mom. I gave everything up. So my job, my business, that's all gone. That I left in that moment because ironically, I told my customers I'll be back in two weeks. (laughs) My life changed. I fell into a dark dark death for about a year and um, what I do need to tell you is in December I for Christmas I ordered my dad a book it was called the laws of eternity and I thought it was a bit about laws of attraction and this came before my son was diagnosed I opened it and the first page is about suicide I thought I can't give that my dad for Christmas he'll be like what is this so I threw it under my bed fast forward to after Christmas I've still got that book I thought I'm going to go read this and it was this book it blew my mind. It gave me a whole different outlook that we were souls and we came into this human vessel to experience life. I chose, I chose all of this. That was a hard pill to swallow. I chose this path, all this in such a short period of time. I feel like I could write 10 books. I mean, even what I'm telling you now, so many events have happened in between this. I was like, why did I choose all of this? (laughs) And then I started feeling a little bit lonely in my awakening. (laughs) Am I going crazy? (laughs) I was exploring all types of paths. I realized I was an empath. I can feel people's moods. So all those times that I felt anxious and when I felt all these different moods, they may not have even been mine, but I wasn't aware I was aware. 
I soon started to realise I'm not my emotions. I'm a middle child, so I've struggled with jealousy a lot in my life. I soon realised that I wasn't being a bad person. It was just, we all act from where we are. For about four years, I'd been reading different books like Hesterics, Laws of Attraction and everything. But I kind of just thought, thought it was just a bit quirky, you know, these things weren't, people weren't interested in. And then something kept telling me, you came here to help others, right? I just, I'm so passionate about helping other people. I thrive from it. it. Gave me a sense of purpose. If you wake up in the morning and you don't want to be here, put yourself away. What can you do to help others? Because life is about what we can give. So even if you feel real, real crap, what can you do to help someone else? If you do that every day, I promise you, you will find your alignment again. You'll find your purpose. So I kind of live my life like this. I felt really down. I was struggling with my son, but it doesn't mean I can't help other people. And by helping other people, I felt this glow inside of me. Like I'm genuinely passionate. So I don't have qualifications to be a nurse or a doctor or counsellor or anything, but I have this calling to help other people. I kind of was told I was a light worker. You know, you do this research, you, you go down the rabbit hole and you can't come out. Once the light's turned off, you can't turn it off. And um, so I started researching a life coach. I want to help people and kind of realised I felt a bit lonely. And what it is, is we all walk around with a mask on. We're too scared to be our, our true selves because we could be a little bit out there for someone. I took my mask off and I realised oh my God, like these are my people. Those people that came to me when I walked my true self, they are my people. And we couldn't find each other because we're all wearing masks. If we take that off and be authentically true to ourselves, no matter what, those people that stay around you, they are your people. And everything else doesn't matter. We're, we're not for everybody. And I've always wanted to be for everybody. So I soon realized that I can't be for everybody, but if I am true, if I speak my truth, if I share my struggles and I am really honest, I talk about things that most people keep secret because I know what it's like to feel alone. And this whole year, I've been doing some really deep inner work, working on who I am, why I react this way, why I respond. And it made me realise if I can help people find their inner life, reignite it all, give them the tools to dive deep. When we project as humans, we can make this world a better place if we all do the inner work. I want to kind of ask you a little bit about that, actually. So the the inner work that is so important, right? And it's what yeah. helps to bring us in alignment to living our best lives. And you've gone through such a, I mean, I was listening to your story and I was like, and, you know, holding back the tears and think, oh my goodness, you know, I just... I don't know how I would have handled a situation like that. And, you know, you are a really an inspiration and with the work that you do as, you know, as a coach and helping, you know, all these people, what do you see as the thing that people resist the most when it comes to working and healing on themselves? I think people are scared to delve deep because it might be all we think we've known is not what, it's truth and one thing I can speak from myself which is truth whenever I had a problem I like to believe it was someone else <laughs> yeah so actually when you dive deep it's really really scary at first to realize damn I'm I'm the reason for all of my problems <laughs> yeah and, I start saying, and, then, and then then to put your hand up and say it's me so even if someone is really really mean if you create a problem from that it's still you we can't control what everybody else does so for example right now the world out there might seem really dark there's uncertainty but actually my world my little world I created is really great that's not me being ignorant but we are responsible that's right for our world we are responsible so when you delve deep into your wounds and, and make them fester again it's really scary so for example me being homeless I blamed so many people for years not realizing I did walk my own path as a human I have the right to say yes and no to certain situations if I became homeless now it would not end the way it did there I know my own worth I know my value and I know I can get out of anything Usually when you're in a dark place, you don't see that. So that is why I'm here to help people delve deep 
if you're unhappy at work, I bet you any money, it's not work making you unhappy. Yeah, that's right. It's something inward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you need to work on that. For me, that is the one thing that stops people doing the inner work is they're probably scared of what they're about to find. And it's not really scary, but it can be like it takes a lot to put your hand up and say, "Oh, these problems are my, are my doing." Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. We are all, every single one of us are responsible for where we are right now. Yeah. And also I think not doing the inner work actually makes your life not as good anyway, because you're just yeah. repeating the same things over and over okay. again. And it's just kind of like, as much as it is uncomfortable, it will lead you to really healing those blocks, those limitations, those beliefs, those things that you've made, you know, as your perceived reality vanish so that you can truly embody what you came here to be and experience, right? Exactly. So because I've done all this inner work, right, it doesn't mean life isn't going to hand me another no. crap song. But what it does mean is when life, because it's ebb and flow, right? I have a tattoo on my wrist and it says love is greater than the highs and lows. Oh, well, I kind but, of, to, to, just to be twinning, I have a love tattoo on my wrist too. And it's a constant reminder for me when the lows come, because I did the inner work, so for a quick second, and it does happen even now, I'm no unicorn, you know. No Something one is happens. immune, right? Yeah. And I feel it. It's even worse probably when you're aware. And I'm like, something really bad has happened. I'm almost wearing it as a cover, like, woe is me. And how am I going to get out of this? But then you quickly start turning the wheel. This will not last forever. Even thinking that thought, you're starting to align again. You can handle things better. Basically, getting these tools, it's almost like when life is great, you probably don't use them so much because it's just natural. But when things start to spiral, you can go, okay, let's go back. What do I know? Deep breaths. This won't last forever. What is life trying to teach me? So That's sometimes right. I have um, reoccurring events and I might be ignorant to it. And then I'll stop and I'll come upstairs. I put my salt lamp on. I get my crystals out. And I'm like, okay, universe, what do we need to work on? Because this feeling, you know, if you feel triggered, maybe if something doesn't feel right inside, we need to work on that. And that goes for me and you. So even though we, we help others, it doesn't mean we don't have to keep going back. We're like onions. It's a layer. Every time. <laughs> I always think, think of Shrek better. like that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep coming back. There's a lot of jargon out there in um, the spiritual world. It's a bit like being a doctor. And I try and make things sound simple. So if I could put it all in a nutshell is love is the only outfit that fits us. And what I mean by that is... Honey, you're talking my language. <laughs> if something is happening and you feel anger, hate, upset, or just irritational, you're about to react on anything other than love. It's like a tight shoe. It's going to really hurt. And when you do sprout that, or when you do act or make a decision from that, you'll go to bed at night regretting it. I promise you. Now, if something happens and you can react from love, you see you're in an argument with someone and you really want to give it them you know <laughs> if you react from love do you know when you go back to bed that night you'll be proud of how you did that and that goes to how we react with confrontation big life problems anything else than love feels like a tight shoe and you just need to take it off love is one size fits all and it sounds really cliche doesn't it actually love but it is the truth it's the only outfit that fits us all so if we can all come from a place of that imagine how the world could look there'd be less crime people who are committing crimes or acts of danger i don't believe the bad people they're in a bad place and they're acting from a place that they know i've been homeschooling my child for six months and we were reading books and he kept getting stuck on words we have to meet people with where they're at so when my child was stuck on his book i meet him with where he is it's the same as anybody if someone is acting out of character don't take it personal they're not aligned right now and they need to go inward I love don't that. take anything personal it is never you someone who or anything that is happening around you don't take it personal it's it's not you and that can be really hard because i used to take everything personal i have a really big heart and it's my it's my power and my curse because i love with all my heart but if i feel pain i feel it with all of my heart and when people or situations have hurt me i have carried that with me for years like 
Free yourself. Same as if you've ever hurt anybody, free yourself from that now. It is not serving you. We can't keep carrying this luggage. You know, do you know when I told you that weight loss wasn't the answer? Maybe the weight I was supposed to lose wasn't always on my body. Yeah. When I lost my weight, I still didn't feel free. I was carrying this baggage. We've got to let it go. We have to. And when you are authentically living your best life, all kinds of miracles are going to come to you. And this is where the law of attraction comes into it. When you are aligned, the things you want can find you so much more easier. The law of attraction, I'm so passionate about it, but it works the other way too. So for an example, as British people, when we're out in the street, we're like, good morning, good morning. Well, the second we get in a car, we're like, why did you stop for me? Why did you do this? And I'm an anxious driver. And when I notice myself doing that, more problems occur, right? More bikers appear in my path and all the things that make me nervous. And I'm like, oh, I'm manifesting this. I am in a bad mood <laughs> and it's escalating. I need to get home, meditate and get myself off this path. The universe doesn't care about exactly what we want. It's all about energy. Yeah. She can't read whether your energy is good or bad. So if you can't stop thinking about something and you're like money, everyone goes back to money. I really want this. I really want this. You're on a place of lack. That's you already right. have it. Mm -hmm. It already exists. We just need to align with it. You already have this. Do not worry. The times I had five pounds last the weekend, the universe always came through. She will never leave you high and dry. You will always come through. And if you do feel high and dry, you're going through a lesson. Life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Mm. I want to ask you, one of the things I was going to ask actually was you are someone who is really passionate about law of attraction. So what is one piece of advice or tool that you would give somebody that you've also used to create your best life? So like, what's the best tip when it comes to law of attraction that you could give us? Okay. So this has really worked for me. Firstly, go invest in some books on it. Read. So when I meditate in the morning, I start my day with affirmations and I read a paragraph of how I would like my life to look. So like today is going to be a really good day. I, I speak it and I vision the things I want. So I would like to move to London. And each morning I already visualize myself being there. I feel it. Feeling is so important. The energy can't tell the difference between whether it's really happened or happening or imagining the feeling is so important so you want ten thousand pounds right don't say you want it we know that you want that tell the universe let it go how does it feel what are the things you're going to go do with that are you going to go book a vacation where are we be on the beach don't focus on exactly what you want focus on what that will give you if you're looking for freedom that doesn't have to be a number what does freedom look like to you vision it so i always go I meditate. I step into my garden. I always put a bubble around me. I'm protected. And I think about the things I desire and I see myself doing them and they will come to you. So when I was homeless on my 18th, I said I wanted to go to New York for my 30th. I did it. Yeah. Visionary. It. I wanted to move house. I did it this past year. I wanted to pass my um, driving test. So obviously there's some action required. But I already knew I would do it. I saw myself getting my certificates. I saw this beautiful painting in a shop near me. I would walk past it every day. It was quite a bit of money. Didn't know how I was going to get the money, but I wanted that painting. That's all I knew is I would get it. I used to imagine myself going in and how good it would feel to go get it. This year, half the lockdown, I saw the painting. I walked in and got it. I didn't know how that would happen. What I did know it would happen. But we often think what we want is so far from us. Don't think about that. Know where you are and know where you're going. Let the journey be beautiful. It's going to be full of all kinds of adventures. Embrace them. You'll get there. But vision and feeling are the power to um, getting what we want. And, and feeling good in this moment. So say your favorite things are go for a walk and have a hot chocolate and a movie. Do them. You are aligning with, with your happiness more happy things are going to come your way because you feel happy. We don't have to have do anything extreme to create 
major resorts. It's just about believing and then letting go. I know you're a huge Abraham Hicks fan as well, right? So you know, like the emotional guidance scale, right? So we're always doing our best to feel into joy, feel into love, abundance, yeah. appreciation, right? And I love that you say that because there's so much emphasis on doing things like vision boards and affirmations and what have you. But I think you uh, already mentioned this. For example, if you're using the affirmation, but you feel still in lack because you're like, I'm saying I'm abundant, but I don't feel abundant. The universe is going to respond to the feeling of lack, right? Rather than you saying the affirmation, I am abundant. So I love that you really talk about, it's not just wanting the 10,000, I'm going to call it dollars because we're not in pounds, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but that would be like $30,000 because I think it's times three. <laughs> Your pound is a lot stronger. But, you know, it's like, it's what you would do with it. So visualize yourself spending it, right? And that's what it's about. And I love that you say that because it seems like you've created so many amazing things. And oh my gosh, I can't wait to see all that you will continue to do. I really wanted to also talk about, and I know you mentioned it in the beginning, your weight loss journey. Because if people see photos of you And that's kind of what drew me in at first to wanting to chat with you. It's like you're unrecognizable. It's like two different people. What an inspiration you are. What are some tips that you would give somebody to motivate them to embark on this journey? Because sometimes it just feels like it's never going to happen or why should I bother? You know, like... You definitely should bother. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to like, you know, without sounding rude, but your transformation was massive. Yeah. And I suppose I almost felt guilty for using it because I'm actually really proud. The first thing I get is you was always beautiful. Right. Let's remove that beautiful is a feeling. I felt beautiful in different shapes and sizes my entire life. But whether you like it or not, you're in this vessel and we do need to be healthy. Come on. You want to live a long life? Let's work on our healthy stuff. And that will also help with the manifestation. We've got to feel good. The truth is, to keep you motivated is time will pass anyway, right? So if you're unhappy with your fitness, your health, your looks, whatever it is, this is a sure indicator that you're going to go on this journey at some point, right? So don't give in now. We may as well embark on it because whether you start changing your life now or don't, these six months are going to pass anyway. So we may as well do this. Yeah, it it is going to be hard. (laughs) Every journey is, but I've been on so many diets because I didn't feel good enough. You've got to step away from that. You've got to do what's right for you. Find what works for you. So for me, I was unhappy. So I knew I was going to make this work. I kept my diet the same. I just reduced the amount. The truth is the science behind weight loss is It is calories in, calories out. So scrap every other diet. We do need to be in a deficit. It takes 28 days to form a habit. Those 28 days are going to be hard. But challenge yourself. Tell yourself, for 28 days, I'm going to move more and eat healthy. And you'll start noticing results. As a human, we love the results side. So when you do start noticing, the motivation comes a lot easier. But with any goal we want, this is something I would tell my clients remove yourself from it you can't just want to lose weight because you want to lose weight so for me I wanted to lose weight so that I could be here with my grandchildren right I could be here with my children so I can run with them play with them you have to remove yourself your vision has to be bigger than you because then when you feel like giving up it's not about you it's about them so you get back up and you keep on going it all back interlinks your vision always has to be bigger than you So if you're feeling really down and and you just, you've had enough, just give it a shot. This time is going to pass. Start eating better. Start exercise. I was 22 stone working out in my living room. I assure you, I wish I had videos. (laughs) I did not know what's doing. YouTube, abundant of videos on there. You've just got to do it. Who cares what you look like, what you're doing? Just go for it. Make the vision bigger than you. Don't beat yourself up. We all trip. There was so many times I ended up in a pile of Mars bars and stuff. I'm human. You've got to find that balance. You know, I went in quite deep. So I was quite all or nothing. It's not a great way to be. Find a balance. Weight loss isn't about taking things from your diet. It's about adding things in. Add more nutritious foods in. We don't take nothing away. We add more delicious foods in. 
and it's just that exercise will help your mentality. It, it's just one big circle. But with any goal you have, be it weight loss, you want to be a teacher, remove yourself from the goal and make it a bigger vision. Why do you want to lose weight? Oh, because I want to do this. I should have been running a marathon this year, but it got cancelled because of COVID-19 um, and it was to raise money for my son's charity. If you had told me when I was 22 stone, I would have ran 20k non-stop. I'd have been like, get out. You are limitless. You can do anything. Believe it and don't give up. I believe if you give up, you're probably not in the right place. Yeah. You know when it's time. And you, you just have to run, run at it and know that this time will pass and your vision is bigger than you. So when you feel like giving up, think of your why. It has to be your core value. I love the bit about the food and instead of taking things out, you're actually adding things, you know, and I love that. What a cute little tidbit. And I always say, you know, to anyone going through a weight loss journey is you don't actually want to lose weight. You want to get rid of it because when we lose something, we usually want it back, right? And just a quick thing about food. Food is not an enemy. Moderation, not deprivation. Food is delicious and it's meant to be enjoyed. But, you know, we can have a piece of cake without the whole cake, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, you do... I'm the whole cake. Yeah, I, I can't just do one yeah. slice. <laughs> But I get that. And you know, it's part of being human is that we have come here to physically experience things, which means we get to experience the aspect of eating and enjoying being able to actually eat food and the taste and the flavors and all the things that it's able to do for us. So I really love that. You know, Catherine, I'm so touched by the story of you as, you know, the young pregnant girl and you know the hostel so I'd love for you to maybe just think about this for a moment if you could go back and tell her how life turns out how would you empower her to just keep staying in the game it's hard because when I do look back on a photo of me I want to hug her because actually I owe her what you see now and what you hear she was the kick-ass yeah, she did it. I felt like I was powerless. I was powerful. She got me here when I felt like giving up. And if I could whisper something to her, it, you came here to make a difference, regardless of what that looks like to others. And again, back to the same thing. I just want to tell her, life isn't about you. Because I was very stuck on all oh, me, me, me. It's what we can do for others. So get back up and keep on going like and she did that is what I did my light inside me so I believe in igniting our inner light I thought it was gone it was not gone just like the coal was ready <laughs> and I up fired it and the universe needed me to break to do that because otherwise I'd have probably just lived a really boring life <laughs> the, no, no we don't want that <laughs> no and actually I wouldn't want to change my story either like what a powerful and this is a very short period of my life. I'm 18 then, I'm 31 now. So much has happened. I'm excited for the next journey, regardless of what that is. But I do just want to give her a hug and be like, you are so kick-ass. Because I don't give her enough credit. When you see that photo of me, I look really timid, shy. She was. A oh boy inside, is she strong? My soul, my... I'm so stubborn. I will never give up. I actually made a pact. You know, if we fast forward to... Um, feeling suicidal after my son was diagnosed I will never end my life here that's not my decision to make when my time comes that is up to the universe I've made a pact with myself so no matter how dark things get you don't wait for a light you are the light light it up and um nothing lasts forever no good time no bad time so if it's a bad time hold on if it's a good time enjoy it yeah you and know, you know Catherine, I can totally relate. I had a suicide journey that lasted two decades. So mine started when I was nine years old. And when I turned 29, I decided, you know, 20 years is long enough to battle with all of this. And I took myself on a holiday to Bali. If you ever get the opportunity, go to Bali. It is amazing. And I feel like, you know, that's 
four years now. So I call it, you know, I've been four years sober per se of not wanting to take my own life. So I really get that journey. And I feel like I get what you're saying about making a pact. And I, I really feel that. And it's something that I understand on such a personal level and you know I've had at the time because now I've got three kids at the time I only had two kids and it wouldn't matter like it wouldn't matter about having the you know these children my darkest time was when I caught myself having an outer body experience writing my suicide note writing all the passwords, what would happen to my kids and what have you and I think that's that was just before Bali that was like two weeks before I went to Bali and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. So I think what an inspiration you are. And I'm so glad that you were able to move past that because you are really transforming people's lives. Just even your story, if people don't even get to work with you, but just listening to your story is empowering and you talk from your heart. And this is why, you know, I call it the rise with love philosophy, because it's all about coming from that place of love, which you do so authentically. And so I kind of want to ask you, what is your vision for humanity moving forward? Like, what would you like to see happening for us? Okay, so (laughs) this is true for my heart. I actually have it written down in a diary. I wrote it a few weeks ago. Maybe it was because my, the universe knew this would happen. Yeah, maybe, right? I have a vision where people don't choose violence to answer the problems. I have a vision that people, grown humans, children, everybody get to go to sleep with a full stomach. It hurts me that people are starving. It's 2020, guys. We need to change this. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, We were free to love whoever we want without judgment. And although things are changing, there is still a lot of judgment. We're a world without judgment, not just who we love, just to be whoever you are. I truly, truly want to create a world where we don't turn to violence. And when you think about, like, we're very privileged right now to have this. People are going to sleep hungry. That kills my heart. You know, you're like, we have to do something. You could feel very powerless. But actually, we are powerful. If you have a vision bigger than yourself, we can make even small changes can have a knock-on effect. You have one person a day, that's 365 people a year. And if they all do the same and they all do the same, this is one big knock-on effect. So if my story can help inspire people to not end their life, to give it their best shot. If I can help just a few clients reach deep down and find their tools, they will pass on the knowledge to help people find their tools, do the in Work. less people will stop reaching to hate and violence and crime to solve their problem if we all go inwards and this can happen i truly believe it i honestly believe we're already shifting 2020 is the year isn't it you can feel that shift yeah, yeah we're all waking up it's happening it's that, f- it's that 5d ascension energy really being mm-hmm. called in now and uh, i think What a beautiful vision. And Mother Earth has a bounty of resources. There is no need for anyone to be going hungry. I totally agree with you. And I hope that in our lifetime that we are able to see this shift. But if not, I hope that as a collective, we could really be making way to bringing. I just love what you do because the inner work is so important. And if we can help bring inner work to everybody, there wouldn't be any violence anymore there wouldn't be that judgment if you think about it even if this shift doesn't happen in mine in your lifetime here the children that we're upbringing have mothers and fathers like me and you we are creating change yeah my children pick up litter for fun yeah they've gone uh, my children went vegetarian on their own accord because they didn't want to eat other beings we are creating a shift we are parenting and leading the way to a new world so even if me and you don't see it this little army of love we are growing is happening and what a powerful feeling that is to know we are part of this yeah. And we can make a difference even through our own little kid looks. Oh, I love it. I'm just so glad that we had this conversation, Catherine. It's just been so, what's the word I want to use? I just feel like soulful, I think. I, I'm so soulful I feel, with you. Yeah, I feel like it's so deep. It was raw. It was vulnerable. It was that dose of vulnerability that I think is really empowering and I just feel like there'll be so many people who want to connect with you 
So where's the best place to find you? I'm still going to link it up anyway, but where can people kind of follow your story, work with you, all of that fun stuff? To be fair, uh, if you if you headed over to my Instagram, which is Catherine Elizabeth, you kind of just find me there and you can, there's links to my website there. And stuff, but that is ultimately where my um, journey is being shared. And I really do hope to make my U- a YouTube channel. It's something I've wanted, but I've been a bit scared. But I can only take people as far as I take myself. So it's time to like just jump. I have a message to deliver and um, I just need to go deliver it because everything you heard here, this really is me. Do you know, you like generally that passionate and that even when you were speaking about your story, I wanted to cry like, you know, when you connect with someone. And you know, I'm with another soul here right now and our, our paths are very similar, although very different. I get that. And you know what, sweetheart, start the YouTube channel. I always say people will choose real over perfect any day. So just start it. And oh my gosh, I feel like you have got something really beautiful to bring the world And I'm honored that we got to have just a little smidgen of you here today. And uh, I'm excited. I hope that we'll be friends and and soul sisters for this lifetime and many more lifetimes to come. It's been my absolute pleasure to chat with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Honestly, it's been been amazing. I've loved it. (laughs) Well, everybody, I hope that you take the opportunity to look deep within yourself and start peeling off those onion layers like we talked about. Think Shrek when Donkey talks to Shrek about being an onion, right? Start peeling back the layers. It's really going to be worth it for you to be living your best life. Can I say one thing before I go? just to bring it back down to the simplest of things if you are having a hard time I wake up every morning and tell myself three things I'm grateful for but that might be extreme for you if you wake up in the morning as soon as your eyes peeled smile you're alive so many people didn't make it overnight it is that simple have a little look around you is your family still here awesome you're all alive if you're all in there then your darkest days have not come yet Okay, you're all here. Appreciate that and go from there. If you wake up in the morning, you're already doing better than a lot of people. But just hold on to that thought. And it will, I tell myself every morning, yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> what, you know, I'm alive. And, and that is all we came to do, really, isn't it? So, yeah. Well, I work, I work as a medium, so I deal with them on the other side. Yeah. And <laughs> so, you know, it's, I really do agree. And gratitude is the quickest way to get yourself into that vibration of co creating your, your dream life. And that's what it is about. It's peeling those, those onion layers where, you know, you realize what is causing you the block, the, the limitations. And so, invest in your yourself because as you rise with love your beautiful unfolding awaits and everyone it's been our absolute pleasure Catherine and myself have had a wonderful time being able to share this wisdom and help you on your journey so until next time everybody peace love and blessings Melissa